Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday night, 8.55 p.m. California time. May 26, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity shows a 1.0 across California. Looks like the San Francisco Bay region finally starting to move here after being quiet for a little while. Might want to be on guard out here with uh, this sudden uptick in movement there. A couple earthquakes around the San Andreas Fault here. Looks like a 1.1 and a 1.5. Uh, literally all four of these quakes here within a very short time frame of each other. So things are looking a little iffy here. May see some larger movement around the San Francisco Bay Area. Keep your eyes peeled. Be ready for some movement. Um, Northern California, goodness, got quite a bit of earthquake activity ramping up here this morning. Uh, with a number of threes and twos, including a 4.6 just off the coast here. Southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Now, there's been quite a bit of trimmer here. Uh, get this. Let me show you guys here real quick. Oh, well, here's today's today's trimmer map, right? That's a decent amount, 406. Remember the absence of trimmers from yesterday? Voila. Look, they added it onto the map. Remember when I was doing the update yesterday? Um, even this morning, they showed uh, no trimmer being reported out here for yesterday that got added on here and i've always i've said here I've, I've been looking at these maps for for many many years and studied the cascadia trimmer uh deeply and i know the trimmer accounts do not just automatically drop off to nothing so i knew it was a little suspicious potentially there was an issue with some of the technical data as far as maybe issuing it out here to the trimmer map but it is on there now so that is good and that brings up the uh Let's check out the monthly tally right now. Over 11,000 epicenters of trimmer. That's a decent amount. And, of course, today's trimmer counts down here across northern California. Expect more earthquake activity and, of course, a likelihood, maybe even a, a potential of seeing the mega quake down here across the southern end, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. I say that because the trimmer activity underneath this region uh, only builds up further strain up there across the locked area. We're seeing some of the effects of it with the earthquake activity that's happening down here just off the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. This here is continuing to build uh, a lot of momentum there for strain. Uh, so watch that closely. Um, and the Bay Area, of course, looks like that's starting to light up. Uh, southern California down here, see what we got. Nothing above 2.5. Uh, one earthquake there just off the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault here in the last hour. Aside from that, mostly uh, smaller microquake activity out here today. No unusual movement, no unusual swarms or anything like that going on. Uh, Nevada still seeing some activity in the 1 and 2 range up into the Pacific Northwest. Relatively quiet, nothing showing up here on the map. Aside from one little lonesome earthquake just outside the Ashford area of Washington, southwest of Mount Rainier. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, wow, 2.7 up there. Let's go see what's going on up there across the Yellowstone uh, seismograph stations there. That's a little crazy, 2.7. Looks like, uh, almost looks like there was two earthquakes there. 1739 is north of Yellowstone Lake. So the epicenter here, more than likely going to be right about here, Purple Mountain or Mary Lake area. Uh, I would say there's definitely more than one earthquake, right? The 2.7 being the largest. Now, remember, whenever there's earthquake activity across Yellowstone National Park, for whatever reason, their computer systems, the preliminary data uh, earthquake reporting system there, is uh, it's pretty much set to only report 2.5 and above earthquakes here for the USGS map. Whatever reason. I've seen them manually adjust it. Uh, to where it will start uh, reporting smaller quakes. But for whatever reason, they like to keep the threshold, regardless if it's a weekend, the week, mornings, afternoon, holiday, always 2.5 and above. I, I wish they wouldn't do that. I, I don't know how to make them, uh, you know, lower the threshold there. But uh, 2.5 and above, that's why we got that 2.7 there on the map. But that's also why there's a number of other quakes as well. There's at least uh, three more lesser <clears throat> lesser than the 2.7 so this looks awfully close to probably 2.5 but more than likely it's probably a 2.4 that's why they're not reporting it but uh looks like a little earthquake activity kicking up there across the uh well, it's going to be within the yellowstone caldera nothing big um this over here 
almost looks like earthquake activity activity <clears throat> but I have to verify that um, and we're gonna do so by going over here to the weather maps and see what may have rolled through there uh, earlier in the day today so that looks like it was around yeah within about the last six hours or so so we'll go back last six hours and I just want to double check oh see there's some storms that blew through there quite a bit so that reading right here is um, those are thunderstorms. Those are definitely thunderstorms that showed up there on the seismograph stations across this area of the park and maybe down here as well. But there's definitely some legit earthquake activity here in the last, you know, last couple hours or so around Purple Mountain. Mary Lake showed up on Borehole as well. But this stuff that you see over here, that's not earthquake activity, but thunderstorms that blew through the area in the afternoon and has since died out. Now, these are the two earthquakes that were picked up. They matched the time frame for the uh, 2.7 and a couple other smaller quakes around this area. So we'll see in the morning uh, what they report as far as these other magnitudes there on the map. Uh, Oklahoma and Texas oil fields still rocking and rolling out there. Nothing new to report across that region. Taking a glance here at the worldwide earthquake map here. Japan, no new activity report there from this morning's little swarm going on. Uh, a little bit of movement further around the Mariana Islands with another five-pointer. Did Nankai, Nankai Trough here still waiting on some mega quake activity here. It's just, it's building up some steam. I'm telling you folks, it's just awfully quiet though. It could pop at any minute. Any minute. Uh, a little bit of larger activity there across the Java Trench with a 5.4. Fairly uh, decent sized quake. Uh, a little deeper movement underneath the Papua New Guinea area. See that 4.5 here. New Zealand backed off here with no, uh, no, really no new earthquake activity to report there. Quiet zone for now across this region. Uh, let's see what else we got there around the Puerto Rico region. A 4.5 stirring up here. Right around the Puerto Rico Trench it looks like. 4.5, 6 miles deep. Nothing uh, major going on there for now. Uh, across the rest of the globe here, got some activity stirring up in Iran and the Mediterranean region. Quite active out here. Looks like a, at least a couple fives out there in Iran region. Let's see what we got. Uh, actually, it looks like it's off... Um, Yeah, it's, uh, is there two five-pointers? There's only one five-pointer there. Another five-pointer out around the Greece area, but on the Earthquake 3D globe here, I'm seeing, uh, well, at least a five-pointer and some other quakes in there as well. So, that, uh, nothing of abnormal activity. This area of the Middle East does get, they do get quite a bit of earthquake activity. Um, let's see here. I better go double-check the... Geophysics website there around Santorini, Greece, with all this movement happening. See if that swarm's kicked up any there across Santorini volcano. Uh, it's just been it's been somewhat consistent there, just off and on earthquake activity. Really not seen anything of uh, of any major movement. Here we are today, right? Um, well. That's going to be there today. So technically you have to check this map. Here's the last 24, 36 hours or so. Not uh, really not seeing a whole lot of activity out there. As far as any increasing uh, movement there across the uh, volcano area of Greece. Look at that earthquake. Way up here. <laughs> Goodness. That... Uh, that's a fairly new earthquake there. 5.1 way up on top of the globe there again. That would, uh, no wonder. It almost looked like the older quake from this morning because there was a 5.1 over here as well. Now we got a 4.9 and, and another 5.1. So a lot of movement happening up here across the northern area of the globe. And man, that could definitely affect a lot of the northern plates out here. Uh, the areas north of the equator. So watch for that. Goodness. 
Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet for now, aside from, uh, like I say, movement north of Iceland and north of Greenland up there. All right, uh, let's go ahead and check out space weather activity, see if anything uh, major is going on here. We do have quite a few sunspots there in the last, or quite a few uh, flares in the last couple days here, including that X flare two days or so ago. Number of M flares and some C flare activity. So let's take a look here and see what we got here on the magnetogram image. A couple massive areas out here. I'm hoping they hold together there in terms of complexity. You got to watch this area up here. It did produce an M flare recently. This area is quite complex as well. Our active region that's been throwing off some M flare uh, activity as well recently is uh, drifting off there on the western limb. So we're going to be left with these two massive areas, at least one massive area. This one's pretty complex though. Fairly small in coverage area, but it's close proximity uh, magnetic structure there harbors the potential for some stronger flaring. But look at the UV filter uh, image of the sun there. Shows quite a few bright features within this area and also down here. So uh, keeping the flare threat elevated, 30% chance for X flare, M flare at 70, C flare up in the 99% chance range. Um, looks like maybe a G1 class storm coming up here on the 28th. Looks like tomorrow night, nothing big. Just a chance for the auroras out there. Uh, really not uh, expecting nothing major going on. We really haven't had any massive CME activity uh, lately. Uh, checking out the Storm Prediction Center for the remainder of the night. Looks like some uh, noise being made out there across areas of the southern Texas region. Got some tornado threat, some wind, and uh, of course some big time hail threats. I've seen a Somebody on social media was sharing a picture of a uh, just about a six-inch uh, diameter hailstone out there around Texas. Absolutely crazy. Imagine that. That thing would fly through your roof. That is uh, it's incredible how much strong of an updraft it takes to recycle the hail like that to get it that big. Absolutely crazy. Uh, but next couple days here, we got, uh, as you can see, storms out there across Texas and Oklahoma and portions of the south we got uh like i say nothing of any major severe outbreak but uh again slight risk there for the next couple days down south there all right so just be on guard folks bay area starting to move um it's been quiet been really quiet here for the last few days or so at least the last week uh, and now we're starting to move got the cascadia up here uh, just be on guard. We'll keep an eye on things. And, uh, of course, if anything major happens here overnight, we'll definitely uh, jump on board and uh, get some updates in. Alaska pretty quiet up there, aside from the typical movement. Similar to Southern California, they're always on the move with those microquakes that are happening out there. All right, folks, have a good evening. We'll see you guys out here for the uh, Tuesday morning update. Take care.